This program is brought to you by Abiding Above Ministries. I've actually been doing a series called The Unseen War. We've done part one, two, and three. Today will be the last one. This is part four. You say, well, I haven't been here for all of them, but probably a lot of you have been. So what have we been talking about? We've been talking about what's going behind the scenes, not only here in Memphis, Tennessee, but across the United States and around the world. And I'm not talking about the political politics. I'm talking about something that many people do not see that's going on around the world. And what it is, it is Satan and his demons operating. I think like we've never seen before. Because when you think about the world wars that we've had, we didn't have the internet so that everything could be broadcast all over the world at the same time. We didn't have that, but we do now. And so there is an unseen war. You say, what do you mean we can't see it? I see it every day. Well, it's a spiritual war when I say it's unseen. If we could see Satan and his demons, it would shock us to the core of our being, and I believe it would turn people to Christ. But they work behind the scenes. They influence. And as I've said many times in this series, Lewis Berry Schaefer said long ago that what Lucifer in heaven is doing since he fell from heaven because iniquity was found in his heart. He came to this earth He tempted Adam and Eve. They began to have children, and then you and I were born because there's only one human race. And Satan is trying to mix everybody's mind up in our present day. We all came from Adam and Eve, period. Originally, we all come from the mind of God. So we are no mistake, or we could not be here. But Lucifer, we know him as Satan, the devil, Beelzebub, he's working behind the scenes trying to eclipse God. You think about an eclipse. You think about Lucifer who said five times, I will, I will, I will ascend to be like the Most High God. What he's doing, because he's intelligent, apart from God, he's the most intelligent of all of God's created beings. So what he's doing, he knows he cannot kill God. He knows God has always existed and always will. So what he's trying to do, in a sense, he's trying to blind the minds of the unbelieving. In other words, he's trying to stand in front of God so that you can't see God. He's the master of deception. He's the father of all lies. He is the author of confusion. And what do we see now? Everybody's saying, where can you find truth anymore? I tell you where we find truth, in the Word of God. Nowhere else, my friend, nowhere else. And that's what he wants to blind me and you from, is seeing God and reading his Word that was written by the Holy Spirit who lives in us. And so we could get frightful. We could, like Jeff and I, We're getting close to being able to draw Social Security. We may be a little nervous that it won't be there when we get 67 and a half. And also we realize it may make us very angry if it's taken away from us in a state of emergency. If it's taken away, which is thievery. And it could happen. We know it. My biggest fear is I may become so angry that... I quench and grieve the Holy Spirit and will not be able to minister because of my anger. Now, I'm just being honest with you. I don't want to be that way, and I pray I will not be that way. My plan is to choose to say, you know what? Even if I had all my Social Security after working, I've worked since I was old enough to work. I've always had a job since I was old enough to work. So I've got Social Security built up. The good thing is this. Even if that's taken away, think about this. I'm going to die anyway. Or Jesus is going to rapture the church, which is what we're about to talk about in this last message. So what matter in eternity? Awkwardness in time. It really simply doesn't matter. I want my wife and my daughter to be safe. But at the same time, sometimes we grow the deepest and the quickest when things that are not unfair fall apart on us. So we'll see what happens. We're trusting God and not trusting 
in ourselves because that will lead to a lot of anger, bitterness, resentment. But we see an unseen war happening across the globe, and we want to look a little more deeply into that today. Before Jesus Christ returned to heaven, he promised this in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. This is what Jesus promised before he left earth and went to heaven to sit on the right hand of the Father. He said this. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Okay, if I lose my social security to thievery from the federal government, I'm not to let my heart be troubled. Why should I be that way? He says, you believe in God. Amen, I do. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Okay, <laughs> Guess what? You'll never see a hearse pulling a U-Haul trailer. I've done many funerals. I've never seen a hearse pulling a U-Haul trailer. That means I can't take anything with me. And he says, I go to prepare a place for you. Now, I want you to think. It took God a week to create the heavens and the earth. And he's been gone now 2,000 years. And he says, I go to prepare a place for you. I can't imagine what heaven is going to be like. I look forward to it. I look forward to going. He says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, not I might come again. He says, I will come again. You can mark it down. When God is emphatic, it is set for all eternity. He says, I will come again. And what will I do? I will receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. My friend, listen, no matter what happens in this unseen world that we see is growing darker and darker, the money's just about gone. Everybody knows it, this paying attention. You know what? God's going to take care of us, amen? You know, the more you have, if you're not wise, it actually defeats you spiritually. There's something about not having as much that causes you to depend on God more. Just in a little while, according to Scripture, we'll be absent from these physical bodies and we'll be present with the Lord unless you're here today and you still stubbornly choose not to believe. You'll spend all eternity with Satan and his demons that are causing this unseen world that you're looking at, and that's what you will experience the rest of your life, and you will never die. You'll be in that darkness. My friend, listen, turn to Jesus Christ. Turn to the cross of Christ where Jesus died in love for you and me. Amen? He was our substitute. Now, when Christ ascended to heaven, the Bible says that a cloud received him, and he went out of sight in front of the disciples. He bodily... After his death, burial, resurrection, he was raised on the third day. He appeared to his followers around 40 days or so. And now they watch him ascend and they could see his body as it went up. And the Bible teaches he's going to come back the same way. That's what the Bible teaches. Two angels said this to the disciples in Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Listen to this. Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taking up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner. He's going to come back the same way. And this is what I believe. I don't even question it. I believe we're going to see this in our lifetime, but I will stick with Scripture. Only the Father knows when the Son's coming back. I stick with that. But I believe you and I are going to see him come back. But I'm not setting a date because I do not know the date. He will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. So Christ will return. His return will be literal. He absolutely is going to come back and it's going to be bodily. In other words, not just a spiritual coming as when he comes into the hearts of persons who pray and ask him to come in. He comes into you spiritually like a hand goes into a glove. But he's coming back literally 
bodily, and we'll see him when he comes. You see, his first coming was as a baby. We celebrate that every year at Christmas. He came as a baby, and they worshiped him. But he came for the purpose of dying. He only lived about 33 years in a human body. And then he was nailed to the cross. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And the Bible says he died one time for all sin, not some, but all sin. That means from Adam all the way to the last person that will ever live, he died for all sins. He was our substitute. He came to seek and to save that which is lost. He came to pay a debt that he did not owe because all of us owed a debt we could not pay. So Jesus' first coming was as a baby. Jesus' second coming will be to save the bodies of believers when they will be resurrected to be like his glorious body. So the second coming of Jesus Christ is really, it's in two events. First of all, there's the rapture of the church, which I've already mentioned to, and then we'll see his second coming as we continue to look. Let's look at the rapture. You say, what is this? Jesus is going to come back. The first part of the second coming of Christ is the rapture. We are now living in the age of grace. Some call it the church age. This present age began after the death of Jesus Christ and the coming of the Holy Spirit. He came as a baby. He came in the presence of the Holy Spirit. He's our comforter. We abide in him and him in us. But he's also coming again. This present age will close. This church age, this age of grace will close at the rapture of the church. And then those who remain here after the rapture, they will enter into what we know and call the seven-year tribulation period. What will happen when Jesus comes? There will be no warnings. You say, well, Chris... Scripture's already been giving us warnings what it's going to be like before he comes. Correct. What's going to happen? It's going to be another day just like today. And he's going to come. Nobody on the news is going to say, okay, Jesus Christ is coming Thursday of next week. Nobody's going to say that on the media or the news or on social media because they can't know that. It's going to be just like another day and he's going to come. That's why we still share the gospel. That's why many of some of my dearest friends, we go out and hand gospel tracts. We handed thousands of gospel tracts at Alderman Park at an outdoor concert recently. Thousands of tracts. Why don't we do this? It'd be easier to stay at home where it's cool and watch junk on TV, which I'm not interested. The reason we do it, because we have to do it now before it's too late. A lot of people do not realize they're sailing with Satan on a sinking ship. And so, what will happen when Jesus comes? There'll be no warnings. It'll be just another day in your life, and then it will happen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17, listen to this. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, And with the trumpet of God, and listen to this, and the dead in Christ will rise first. That means your mom and dad, uncles and aunts, grandparents who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, they will rise first at the coming of Christ. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. My friend, listen. I know sometimes we hear so much preaching that we can be bored. But do you realize you're not going to be here forever on earth? Do you realize you're getting older? You know, my hair turned from dark brown to gray. And now my hair has turned from gray to white. And eventually I'll breathe my last breath. I'll be absent from this physical body and I'll be present with the Lord. This is temporary. Think about all the people that were well-known around the world. They are dead, and they're gone from here. There's no way to stop it. You can take vitamins all of your life. You can exercise and eat right and think right, but you're still dying. All of us are dying. Now 
is the appointed time. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. So there's the rapture. That is, the catching up or the caught up of Christians to be with the Lord. The bodies of Christians who have died will be resurrected first, and those who are still alive will be caught up bodily to meet the Lord in the air. I believe you and I are going to be caught up bodily to meet the Lord in the air. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 53. Listen to this. The Apostle Paul says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So many people will ask, when they start thinking about these things, many people will ask, will we know our loved ones in heaven? Listen to 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Listen to this. Beloved, now, talking about right here on this earth, now, this moment we call time, we are children of God. It is my prayer that everyone in here is a child of God. But I can't know that. If you're not, you need to believe and receive today. Beloved, now we are children of God. Right now, we're our children of God. And it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when He is revealed, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. We shall be like Christ morally, physically, that is, with a spiritual body, and mentally we'll be like Christ. Now listen to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. We know it as the love chapter. Listen to this. For now we see in a mirror, right now, in this moment called time, right here on this earth, just like he said in 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, Beloved, now we are children of God. He's talking about right now. For now we see in a mirror dimly. What's that mean? Things are not completely clear to me. They will be one day when you have the mind of Christ. Right now, there's some things that we know and we talk about, we see in Scripture, but they seem dim to us. We don't clearly understand everything. We understand many things, but not everything. And the things that we do understand, we have degrees and clarity of it. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. My friend, listen, there is coming a but then. Have you put your trust in Christ so you'll be part of that? But then face to face. Now, in this moment called time, I know in part. I know dimly, as in a mirror dimly, and I know in part. That means we can't know everything, but the main thing we need to know is the only way into heaven is through Christ and Christ alone, by His death on the cross. He says, but then, talking about one day when you're released from these bodies, and Christ comes back and you're in His direct presence, but then I shall know just as I also am known. To the degree that God knows you, there's coming a day that you will know to that same degree, just as I also am known. This is the reason we will have the mind of Christ. And when the Bible talks about us falling down and worshiping Him, I don't believe it'll be posturing so that other people can watch and think we're godly. I don't think it'll be because, well, we have to. Everybody else is doing it. I'll get on my knees. I think when we have the mind of Christ and we realize His agape love, that it really is past finding out, and we finally find out, we're going to just be so humbled by the fact that He would die for such a worm as I, that we're going to fall down and worship Him without thought. And so, we'll have the mind of Christ. So I believe we will know each other in heaven, just as Christ knows us. 
But the relationships, of course, will be different. And I do not believe people are going to remember bad things about you and you're not going to remember bad things about them. But the Bible says the former things have been passed away and he shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. I believe that will be over with. You won't walk around heaven saying, I should have done more. I should have done more. I should not have done that. I wonder if he knows. I wonder if none of that. All that's under the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Here's a question. Will we look like we do now? Man, I sure hope not. We will not measure beauty as man does now. Being handsome, being beautiful, and our generation is being sexy is pretty much what drives everybody. They want to have a look. They want to have a walk. They want to have a talk. If they realize how much they look like Lucifer and his demons living that way, they would stop it and say, what am I doing? Does he have my mind? It's not about personal appearance. It's about Christ and Christ alone. We won't measure beauty as we do now. God does not gauge beauty by the length of the nose or the proportions of the figure. Beauty is not skin deep with God. So when we become like him, we shall measure appearance by his standards. All those other things will be passed away. So to be like him, if you can say, according to scripture, I'm going to be like Christ. I want to ask you, is there anything more that you want to be like than Christ and Christ alone? You say, yeah, I would actually like to be more admired by others than them admiring Christ, Lucifer, Satan, the devil, demons. They want to be looked at for how they walk, their body, how they sing, how they act, how they play sports, satanic wickedness and evil. Not everyone who's in that field does that, but you may be shocked how many are full of Satan. You can tell by their language, evil. You see, Lucifer will be like Christ and that should satisfy us. Lucifer was right there with God in heaven and he was not satisfied. Iniquity was found in his heart. And he's driven today. I'm going to eclipse God. And everybody on earth is going to admire me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. When you walk about today, watch how people walk. Look at their countenance. Read what's on their clothes. Listen to how they speak. They want to be worshipped by other human beings. That can be traced back to Lucifer in heaven. He's working behind the scenes in this unseen world. We want to be like Christ. Another question sometimes people ask about these times ahead, just ahead of us is will babies grow up in heaven? Because sometimes babies die like an infant death or at a very young age. Will they grow up in heaven? We know babies go to heaven when they die. But as to whether they grow up or not, we are not told in the Bible. When the Bible does not tell us, then your guess is good as mine. And the truth is this. If they do, it would be under God's will. If they don't, it'll be under God's will. So no matter what, it's perfect because it'll be heaven and heaven is perfect. So another thing people ask is how can a person be happy in heaven if he knows he has loved ones who are in hell. How can a person be happy on earth if they know their loved ones are going to hell? Now is the time to show them in love right now before it's too late. When we get to heaven, we will have the mind of Christ and we will see everything from his viewpoint. We shall think as God thinks. Think of this present world system we're in now. Think of the chaos and confusion that will happen when suddenly Christians are caught up with Jesus in heaven. Can you imagine if there's a pilot flying from here to Europe and he's a Christian and all of a sudden he's gone right in the middle of the flight? 
Can you imagine what happens all over in Memphis around the 240 and Interstate 40 areas when all of a sudden those who are Christians are just taken out of their cars at the rapture? Matthew chapter 24, verses 40 through 42. Listen to this. Jesus speaking, Jesus says, Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Let me ask you, when Christ comes back, and I believe he's coming soon, are you going to be one of those? You're going to look around and you're going to say, I'm here. I'm still here. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. Jesus said these words. That means you and I will be living our life just like every day, doing our normal things, and then it's going to happen. Will you be left behind? Let's remember, coming events, it's like someone walking, and you can't see them, but they're coming down a hallway. It's a certain time of day when the sun is where it is, coming through the windows. You can't see the person, but you see their shadow against the wall, and you can hear their footsteps, but you can't see them. Think about Jesus coming back. Think about what the Bible says things are going to be like in the last days. It's like we're seeing the shadow of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're hearing the steps of Christ. He's coming, and I believe he's coming soon. The closer we come to the end of this church age, there will no doubt be longer shadows of the beginnings of these preparations for the coming of the Antichrist, and I believe the Antichrist is alive somewhere now. I can't know. This is what I personally believe. There will be movements toward unification of nations, labor and trade, and religions. All that is happening right now. There is a strong push right now to bring the whole world under one leader. That leader will be the Antichrist. He will be possessed by Satan. We're living in these moments right now. It's happening. The Bible said this long, long before there was a United States of America. My friend, listen, the Bible already listed all these things before there was a United States. There will be a push for the whole world to become one. Listen again to Jesus in Matthew 24, verses 32 through 35. Listen to Jesus. He says, now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. We see this every year right out here. We see trees go from dormancy, and in the springtime they begin to leaf out, and everybody gets excited because things begin to look more alive and happy. Jesus says, when its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, all these things we're looking at right now, we're seeing it and hearing about it right now. When you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away but my words will by no means pass away. Many years ago, it's been 31 years now, I went to the Holy Land with Dr. Adrian Rogers of Bellevue Baptist Church. I was a single man. Went to the Holy Land. We were doing a tour. And I never will forget walking down Palm Sunday Road with Adrian Rogers. And I asked him about this passage I just read. And I said, are we this generation? And he said that he believed this passage was talking about the generation that would be alive when Israel became a nation. My friend, listen, that happened in 1948. Remember, more than two million Jews were killed by the Germans, Adolf Hitler specifically as the leader. And now they become a nation again in 1948. That was an absolute miracle from God. 
God made it happen. He said that he believed this passage was talking about the generation that would be alive when Israel became a nation in 1948 or when they took control of Jerusalem in 1967. So you do the math. Is the generation in the New Testament or in the God's Word, is it 50 years, 70 years, or 100 years? You can do a study on that and look at 1948 or 1967 and add those up, and you'll have to say, it looks like he's at the door. But only God knows We can't know, but we can take pleasure and rest in knowing that God knows and everything he said in his word, it's going to happen. So here's the question. What are the signs? What are the signs? Israel became a nation again in 1948. As far as wars, yes, there have always been wars, but never before have we seen so many prophecies coming true at the same time as they are right now. It's happening all at once. Jesus said in Matthew 24, verses 6 and 7, He says, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Look what has already come to pass, and look what is just ahead of us. There is a major war expecting any moment right now. And look what's already happened. Earthquakes. We see earthquakes every year now that kill thousands. We're so used to it that we think about it and we say, oh, that's horrible, and we don't think about it anymore. We're so used to it. World conditions. The king of the north, which is Russia. The king of the east, which is the Orient. The countries of Asia. Then there's Iran. There's an alliance between Iran and these. That's happening right now. That's happening now. Why in the world would the United States of America send billions of dollars in cash to Iran on wooden pallets. Satan, demons, he's working unseen, coming to the point that the Bible says will happen. That's why there's peace efforts. The Bible says Israel is like a cup of trembling. If you could picture an older man holding some water right now and he's weak and he's shaking, you think, oh my goodness, he's going to spill that water. Israel is that way right now. Isn't it interesting how many of our young people hate Israel and they know absolutely nothing about Israel? They don't know anything about Israel. You ask them, why do you hate them? They don't know. It's because they're being influenced to hate Israel, though they know nothing about it. This is all prophecy. This was all shown from the Word of God before the days in which we're living right now. It's already been in the Bible, and it's coming out just like this. Just like the springtime, the leaves come out. It's all coming out. Another sign is the increase in travel and knowledge. I've been able to travel all over the world many times, and I never really had a desire to go anywhere. I thought maybe Hawaii one day I'd go there. But I just never really dreamed about going all over the world. But that's what has happened to me in God's will. But it is amazing. Every time I get on the jet, God always brings this verse to my mind. And lo, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. So... Knowledge has increased. Look now. I mean, just the phones. Everybody here more than likely has a phone. In Africa, where there's heavy, heavy poverty, after their thousands of years of history, there's a lot of poverty still in Africa. Everybody has a phone everywhere you go. Water may be an issue, but having a phone is not. That's all signs of the last days. Knowledge will increase twofold. There is some very wealthy billionaires that are trying to get a phone and pay the expense of getting a phone in every human being's hand on earth that needs one. It sounds like humanitarian effort, but it's not. It's total control is what's happening. And so there's an increase in travel and knowledge. Daniel 12, 4. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the day of the end. Many shall run to and fro. Knowledge shall increase. That's happening right now. And then there will be religious decline. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 through 4. Let 
No one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed. Talking about the Antichrist, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. 1 Timothy 4, 1, Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. 2 Timothy 4, 3-4 says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Listen. Some of you may be here right now, and you'll be glad when I'm done, and you can go eat a bite of lunch. Some of you had your feelings hurt in a local church many years ago, and so you've walked away from it. My friend, listen, think wisely. God has not done that to you through His Word. Human beings did that to you. You may have walked away from the church because you're angry at humans. But listen, God did not do through them what they did. Go back, get involved, and get back in the Word of God because God loves you and sent His Son Jesus in love to die for you. Amen. You've been listening to Abiding Above Ministries with Chris Hodges. If you would like Chris to speak at your church or event, please go to our website, abidingabove.org. God bless you and make you a blessing.